Hello, my name is Miguel Iglesias and welcome to part one of this tutorial series where I will show you how to create the best custom brushes in Photoshop for you. Alright, so here it is. The secret to get the perfect brush is to create it yourself. So let's jump into it. In order to get brushes that can give you this pentrally result or a more sharp and industrial look to your work as I have used in these two different pieces, let's start by understanding the basics of how brush works on Photoshop. Let's take a default brush. Brushes work like stamps. If you put many of those stamps together, it will create a brush stroke. If we separate the distance in between these stamps by increasing the spacing, you will notice the individual shape of this stamp. This shape or stamp is called brush tip shape. Now, let's start by creating our brush. At this point, we have two choices. To create a brush tip from scratch directly on Photoshop or import a pre-made shape outside Photoshop using photos or scans. We will leave the second option for later parts of this series and focus on creating it directly on Photoshop. Knowing how to create brush tip shapes and how to get the best out of them is the most important and essential aspect of the process of creating a good brush. People tend to think that the best and most useful brushes need to be complex and elaborated, but the truth is that in many cases the best brushes are the simplest ones. To illustrate that, I will show you the process of how I created this custom brush that I use almost exclusively on my work, despite of hundreds of brushes that I have on my library. As you can see, it is a very simple and clean brush, but it allows me to replicate the look of traditional media by leaving some traces on the edges that imitate the uneven marks left by a traditional brush and by having certain level of transparency giving the illusion of mixing colors. So let's begin creating on a separate layer a simple shape. The basic idea at this point is trying to replicate the actual shape of the stroke left by a real brush with paint on a surface. I decided to go with a square, but you can choose a circle or any other shape you want. My recommendation though is to keep it as simple as possible. Next, we start softening the edges of this basic shape. After many experiments, I have discovered that avoiding hard edges on the shape allows you to achieve a very smooth brush stroke with a very fluid look to it, as it is with oil paints. We want to keep the shape as transparent as possible, leaving only a small portion of more opaque color in the center. After that, we will start carving some stripes, which will later help us to simulate the uneven marks of the hair from a brush. At this point in the process, you can also play as much as you want until you are pleased with the results. And once again, my recommendation will be keeping it simple. Now, once we are done, we make a selection of the shape and we go to the Edit tab and then Define Brush Preset. After we click it, the program will ask you to name this brush. At this point, you don't have to name it since we are not done yet. You will see that it shows a little icon that is exactly the same as the shape we just created. The number underneath shows what the max amount of pixels either in height or white is, showing exactly the size of the brush. We press OK, and you will see how our brush instantly changed to the brush tip we just created. Now I want you to create a new layer. You will also see that you will find this new brush tip at the end of the brush list available to you when right clicking on the mouse or the tablet pen. If we try now our newly created brush tip, you will notice that the brush stroke is quite rough create edges and doesn't have any fluidity to it, when what we are trying to create here is a brush that behaves as close as possible to a real paintbrush. In order to do so, we need to go to the brush settings. To access the brush settings, you need to go to the window tab and click brush settings. So at this point, in order to get our brush to behave fluidly and to react to pressure from our pen, we will need to play around with some of these settings. For this example, we will only use some few of them just so you get its fundamentals, but feel free to try them all around. Depending on the type of shape you have created, you will want to use spacing to control the smoothness of the brush strokes. The more you increase the spacing, the more the individual stamp shapes will separate from each other, resulting in a more rough brush stroke. The more you decrease the spacing, the more the stamps will get together, resulting in a smoother brush stroke. I will recommend you trying to avoid to have spacing down to 1%. The reason for that is that with 1% the amount of little stamps is going to be very high with each brush stroke, resulting in a much higher level of computing power which could make the program lag depending on your computer. In many cases you can have the same visual result without the need to go down to 
Now we want to select transfer in order to give our brush the ability to react to the amount of pressure we create with our pen. We go to opacity jitter and under the control panel we select pen pressure. This way the softer we press the pen the more transparent the brush stroke will be and the stronger we press the pen the more opaque the brush stroke will become. Now we go to flow jitter and under control panel we select pen pressure. This time when we press lighter the pen the less flow of color we have on our brush stroke and the harder we press we will have a higher flow of color on our brush stroke. Alright, so far so good, but our brush stroke still shows many edges and lack of fluidity. To achieve that we will need to select shape dynamics. Once you click it, it will show several slides and options. The one we are interested for this example is angle jitter and under the controls panel select the direction option. This will allow the brush shape to follow the direction in which you are moving your pen, resulting in a very smooth and fluid brush stroke as it would behave on a traditional media. I will leave the other options off, but you can always play around with them until you find something you like. After all, this is about you creating the perfect brushes that will suit best your own needs and artistic preferences and nobody else, right? Let's go through them fast to understand how they work. If you go to size jitter, you can control the size of your brush with pen pressure by going to control panel and select the pen pressure option. And from here, moving the slide called minimum diameter, you can select how much you want to reduce the size of the brush depending on how hard you press your pen. Since I want my brushes to behave as close to real paint brushes, I normally don't select this option at all or leave it pretty high. Then we have roundness jitter which means it will randomly change the amount of queasiness of your brush. We will keep it off, but again, feel free to play around with it. Now, please don't forget to save the brush. This is very important at this point, since if you select any other brush through this process here, and you go back to the brush you have been creating, you will find that all the presets and options you have been selecting will have gone to default. To do so, go to this icon, click it, and it will ask you to rename the brush. Now is the good time to do it. Capture brush size in presets means every time you open this brush it will open it with the original size you created. I prefer not to do it since I want to maintain the same brush size anytime I change to another one. Include tool settings is to maintain the preset on your brush. You want that. And include color is to maintain any original color you had on your brush if that is the case. But I will leave that unchecked. So, following this tutorial, as you can see, we managed to get a brush that reacts to the angle of our hand, follows the direction of our pen, it's smooth and fluid, and imitates in a simple but effective way the marks of a real brush on paint. It also allows us to have a very precise control over the opacity of each brush stroke, creating a very real sense of color mixture between different layers of color. And that's it for today. I will continue adding more levels of complexity and options to the process of creating your best brushes in coming episodes of this series. As always, if you have any feedback or suggestions for content, write them down in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if this was helpful at all. And also make sure to click the link on the description to jump into my stream on Twitch TV. I hope to see you there and until next time, bye bye.